Hello, friends. Oh, here comes my cat. <laughs> this is Loki. Over the past few weeks, I've made several videos really focusing on elimination diet and my journey with that, with my autoimmune disease. And I keep getting this question. Um, <laughs> some of them are snarky. Most of them are just like nice and inquisitive. And the question is, okay, but what do you eat? Tell me what you eat. And so, some of them are like, this wasn't helpful because you didn't tell me what you ate. Understandable. Uh, just a reminder. So for those of you who are new, I actually do have a whole playlist of what I eat in a day vlogs that takes you through what I eat. And you can see in real time me eating my very personalized autoimmune diet that I came up with because I've done carnivore as an elimination diet like several times. But today I am going to tell you, I'm going to tell you exactly what I eat currently because this fluctuates through the seasons, honestly. So you can see that in my what I eat in a day vlogs. Why is this crooked? So this is summer edition. And at the end, I'm going to tell you a secret. All right. I'm going to tell you a secret. So stick around for that. Um, to get started, I thought we'd just go by food groups and go down the list. And I think that will be much more effective than me just bouncing all around all over the place. So we're going to start with the number one thing that makes up the most of my diet, my very personalized Nisha diet, protein uh, from animal products. So meat. My personal diet includes a large variety of meat, but we're going to go through the list. So the number one source of my animal protein comes from beef mostly ground beef. I do eat steak from time to time. Honestly, that's like the main, <laughs> that's the main things I eat from beef, ground beef and some steaks. Yeah, that's pretty much my beef. I love ground beef. It can be done so many different ways. I actually have a video on my channel showing my top, I can't remember, top 10 ground beef recipes. I don't know. I did it like two years ago. Anyway, so I'll link all of those videos, uh, all of the videos that I'm talking about, I'll, I'll have them linked in the description for you guys if you want to go check those out too. So that's, uh, so that's beef. <laughs> I also really enjoy chicken from time to time, specifically chicken thighs because they're very fatty. I love the chicken skins. I will make chicken skin chips. So you just peel the chicken skin off, stick it in the air fryer or the oven, crisp it up. It's delicious. I also eat fish from time to time. Most of the time, if I'm eating fish, it's at a restaurant. I just, I'm not very good at cooking seafood. I just don't have it in me for some reason. It just, and I don't like smelling the house up with seafood. It's just, I don't like it, but I enjoy it immensely when I'm at restaurants. So if I go to a restaurant and there is seafood on the menu, what I will usually order is a shrimp cocktail. I just don't use the cocktail sauce. Um, I will dip it in butter. I'll get shrimp scampi. I will get crab legs, raw fish. So if I'm at a restaurant that has ahi tuna on the menu, I will get that. I love ahi tuna. I love it. So sashimi, which is the... If you go to a sushi restaurant, they will have sashimi on the menu and it's basically, it's just strips of raw fish. And I love that. But like I said, I eat that when I'm at a restaurant. That's not something I eat. <laughs> That's not like constantly in rotation because I live in the middle of uh, nowhere. And really? Hold please. Okay. Spam. So much spam, y'all. <laughs> I don't even know what, what was I saying? So yeah, anyways, I like seafood, but I never eat it at home. Oh yeah, okay. So I live in the middle of nowhere. I am in very rural West Tennessee and to eat at a restaurant that has that type of stuff, I have to drive to Nashville, which is like an hour and a half away from me. So I'm not getting <laughs> that kind of food. I mostly eat at home. I mostly cook for myself and it's a very basic set of uh, recipes that I make over and over and over again. Oh, I love lamb and we actually raise sheep. So <laughs> to be clear, we do not, we do not eat baby sheep. All right. These sheep are like two years old when we send them to market and get them processed and bring them and back and put them in the freezer. But I do enjoy mutton from time to time, uh, especially rack of lamb or lamb roast 
or um, just lamb meat in general. We just had four sheep processed about a month ago, and man, if it's done, if you cook it right, and we have St. Croix sheep, so they're very mild tasting where some sheep could be a little gamey, although I do also, let's throw this in, I, I eat venison, so uh, like I said, I'm from rural West Tennessee, and I have been hunting since I was a wee little lassie. So I think I shot my first deer when I was eight. And I love venison. We have a farm here. We have hunting land. And so every year, he, my dad recently has been bringing in, <laughs> bringing in the venison. I haven't went hunting in a long time. I need to. And then we send that to the processor. And then we eat that a lot too. We love venison here. Eggs. I love eggs. They are a main source of a lot of my daily meals. So if you watch my What I Eat in a Day vlogs, you're going to see a lot of eggs. I love them so much. I love them scrambled. I love them fried. I love them boiled. I love them deviled. I love eggs any way you slice it. Uh, egg salad. I like eggs in my tuna salad. Um, so I do eat some canned tuna from time to time and tuna salad and I get a, I just make sure that it is not in seed oil and I put boiled eggs, onions, and dill pickles and then I make my own mayonnaise or I buy mayonnaise from the store. I like the brand Chosen. Okay, uh, pork. So I don't eat a lot of pork variety. I mostly eat bacon if I'm eating pork. Now, I do eat a significant amount of bacon. I eat bacon four to five times a week. I absolutely love it. I cook it in bulk. My kids love it. My husband loves it. We eat a lot of bacon. I get my bacon from Peterson Farms uh, because they have really good quality bacon. I also buy sausage for my kids from Peterson. They have a lot of different cuts that you can buy from there, but I really love bacon and sausage. It was like my main one. And I, honestly, I don't eat sausage anymore. It's bacon. And I also, and I put bacon on um, everything, pretty much. Um, so ooh, I think that fills out the meat category. Let's move to fats because I just talked about bacon. Because I cook so much bacon, I have a lot of bacon fat. And I, I keep it on my counter in a container made specifically for bacon grease so it is protected from sunlight so it doesn't go rancid. I do not refrigerate it. If you want to, you can. I have been using bacon grease my entire life. I've been storing it on the counter my entire life in these type of containers and I have never, ever, 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 ever had bacon fat go bad. Ever. And so that's what I cook most of my meat in. That's my fat of choice. I love bacon fat. It adds flavor and it. I just love it. Now, I also use butter, and from time to time, if I am making a special recipe, I will use olive oil or avocado oil to fry things in, so I make my own chicken nuggets, and if I want to fry them on the stovetop, I, will easy, I, I usually use avocado oil, and I use avocado oil from the brand Chosen, same as the mayo, and it's really good quality. I enjoy it, but that's a very rare thing. I because I'm lazy. <laughs> and uh, if you've ever fried foods on the stovetop, you know, it's kind of um, a long process. It's messy. It takes time. And I just, I don't really do it that much unless I'm just really wanting chicken nuggets. I use pork rinds ground up for my batter. Just to be clear, I'm not eating traditional chicken nuggets. Or I'm doing a recipe for a video. Like, it's a very rare occasion that I am frying anything on the stovetop. I just am too lazy for that. And those are the fats that I use. And 90% of the time, it is bacon fat. And the other is a variation of the other fats that I said. I don't use any seed oils, like industrial seed oil. So I try, I try my best to stay away from canola oil, peanut oil, vegetable oil, any of that stuff. With the, you know obvious risk of running into that when I go out to eat at a restaurant depending on what type of restaurant I'm eating at and then I'm just like you know I'm doing the best I'm here at the restaurant I'm gonna do it's fine it's a very small amount one time <laughs> we never leave the house okay the amount of times I'm eating out is is like God, it's so little guys I just don't get out much <laughs> I'm a homebody and I like my own food better than most restaurants. It has to be a very special restaurant. So for the most part, I'm v easily able to stay away from seed oils because I'd like, I just don't go out to eat. Mm -hmm. Going out to eat usually happens when we are on a trip. We're going somewhere 
and I'm just doing the best I can. When we travel and it's a long distance and I know I'm gonna get hungry at some point, like if we're going to the airport, um, we have an hour and a half drive to the airport, then we have like a two hour wait at the airport and then we have anywhere from a two hour flight to a four hour flight to get where we're going and I'm gonna get hungry at some point. I take carnivore bars with me. This is the honey barbecue flavor. So this one does have some sugar in it, but it is only seven grams of carbs for the whole thing. And that's that doesn't bother me and I have no reaction to it at all. But they have the salted and the unsalted and they are, the ingredients list is literally grass-fed beef, grass-fed tallow and Redmond salt. And that's it. It's pemmican. So you can Google what pemmican is. It's a blend of fat and protein from beef. 20 grams of protein in this bar and 35 grams of fat. And that's amazing. So I take these with me when we travel because the options are limited at the airport and they're very expensive. Now these are not cheap, but have you bought a pack of cashews from the airport? It's like $10 for a very tiny, tiny amount. So I'm still really saving money because I would have to buy four things of jerky and a pack of nuts or something like that. And it would end up costing me $50. So actually <laughs> this does save me money on trips, which is usually when I'm carrying these around. I will say if you do get those and you're going on a trip, make sure you don't leave them in the hot car because they will melt because they have a lot of fat in them. So I love carnivore bars for travel specifically because they keep me on plan and they keep me satiated. They taste really good and I just enjoy them. Um, I do have a discount code. I will put it on the screen and in the description if you're interested. Another thing I do when I go on trips is take my electrolyte packets with me. So I drink element electrolytes. I'll throw those in my purse, my carry on. I'll take those with me. So let's go to beverages real quick since I'm already on that. Uh, I will, I only drink water most of the time, that is what I'm drinking. Sparkling water, I like LaCroix. Um, I've tried the Waterloo, those are really good. I like Topo Chico, San Pellegrino. I mean, any kind of sparkling water. Even when I go to a restaurant, even if I order a martini or something to be, <laughs> be a fancy, I will always get a club soda or a sparkling water with it. That's just what I order at restaurants 99% of the time. Um, if we're on a family outing and I just want to, sometimes I will have a Diet Coke from time to time or a Diet Dr. Pepper if they have that on the menu, which is like never on the menu. So <laughs> I usually don't have to, I'm not even tempted to order a Diet Soda because I don't even, I don't like Diet Coke. I like Diet Dr. Pepper. I'm very picky. So usually is I'm not tempted because they never have it. I drink coffee. I love my coffee machine. I have a Nespresso Virtuo Plus and I buy the pods from Nespresso and I have a double shot of espresso over ice with a little bit of lactose-free milk. So I use lactose-free milk as my creamer because I have a sensitivity to heavy cream. I know this because I did an elimination diet and um, I have cystic acne if I drink heavy cream every single day. Now, if I have it, if we go out and we're heading to Starbucks for the once every three months trip to Nashville <laughs> and that's probably we definitely don't go every three months it's probably I don't even know it's not very much I never get to go to Starbucks okay let's just put it that way I live in the middle of nowhere then I will sometimes have heavy cream in my coffee but even now when I order it I just get half and half so I'll order the same thing that I drink at home a double shot of espresso over ice with half and half and that's what I drink. That's my Starbucks order. Anything else? Do I drink anything else? I mean, I have an adult beverage from time to time. And um, I love dry farm wine. So dry farm wine is like keto approved. And no alcohol is really keto friendly, okay? It's alcohol. Is it a health food? No. But we're all adults and we can do what we want. And sometimes I drink wine, all right? And if that offends you, I just really don't care. <laughs> So dry farm wine is very, very low sugar, the way that they make it. I don't know. I have a link in the description. It gets you a penny bottle if you order through them. And they have all the details. I don't know all the details. Like, I don't care. But it does, it has no nitrates and it doesn't give me a headache. And I really enjoy their wines. So alcohol from time to time. Yes, I do. So sue me. Uh, cheese. So Cheese is something that I am very particular about, the type of cheese that I eat and the amount that I eat it. 
I went through a phase where I was making mozzarella chips. You, if you watch my videos, you might see me making these in one of my what, in a, what I eat in a day videos. So I sprinkle mozzarella in little piles on wax paper, stick it in the oven, bake it for, I don't even know how long. I haven't made them in forever. And they make little chips and they are so good. But I was eating those every single day, like probably half a pound of cheese. <laughs> It was a lot and I noticed that my face was breaking out and I just didn't feel good and so I stopped doing that and now I only eat the mozzarella that comes like the real mozzarella not the shredded mozzarella the real true mozzarella the little balls um, and I seem to do okay on that I use Parmesan Romano most of the time that's my cheese of choice and goat cheese love goat cheese like really love it and I used to hate it it's so funny I used to hate goat cheese and now it's it's my, one of my favorite cheeses and yeah oh smoked gouda I love but I can't find again middle of the no, middle of nowhere can't get smoked gouda here I don't why not we have a Walmart okay that's what we got we got the Walmart and that's all we got I have to travel to go anywhere like, I think the closest alternative is Kroger. Sprouts in Nashville, Trader Joe's in Nashville, Whole Foods in Nashville, those kind of things. They're, they're a bit, it's a haul to get there, okay? And I just, I miss, so we used to live in Nashville, if you're new. Originally from right here, moved to Nashville, came back here. It's a long story. That is the number one thing I miss from Nashville. It's not the restaurants, and it's not the culture, and it's not downtown, and it, no. It's the grocery stores. That's what I miss. Like I said, lactose-free milk. That's what I use uh, in my coffee and I use like a teeny tiny amount, almost nothing. Sweets. Uh, I don't eat sweet stuff because I don't love sweet stuff with the uh, exception of this carnivore honey barbecue bar. It's just really good and it doesn't seem to bother me. And if I do indeed have a sweet tooth like around my cycle, this comes in clutch. I, I did a reel the other day and I'm eating one of these while I'm doing the reel. And there were so many comments that were like, giving health advice as she eats a candy bar. I mean, it does look like a candy bar. And Bonnie, my daughter, she calls it meat candy. She's two and she loves these two. Uh, <laughs> but the ingredients list is so pure, especially in the ones that like, not the honey barbecue one, but the grass, the salted and unsalted, like there's, it's the shortest list of ingredients you're gonna find. Probably. This one is grass finished beef, grass finished tallow, raw honey, and pluck seasoning mix, and Redmond's real salt. Pluck seasoning mix actually <laughs> has organs in it, I think. So even better. Anyways, I just don't love sweet stuff. That's never been my siren song, uh, you know, but I love savory things. Love, love savory things. So my Achilles Hill used to be Doritos. Um, yeah, and I still, I'm not even going to lie, when I see Doritos, especially when we're traveling and they're sitting on the shelf, they call to me, come get me, just a few won't hurt. They do. That's my main source of temptation, but I've done really, really well for a long time. They no, lo they no longer hold <laughs> the weight that they used to over me. When it comes to vegetables, I have a short list. Um, so in the summer, the list is a little bit longer since I'm doing a summer video, we'll, I'll include those. So in the summer, for whatever reason, in the summer, I don't know why, I want a salad and I'm not really a salad girly, but I want a salad in the summer. It just sounds really good. And so I will use uh, romaine lettuce and only romaine lettuce. And that is just because I love it. It tastes good and it causes me no issues as far as I can tell. And I use way less than like most people would put in a salad. It's 90% toppings and 10% romaine lettuce. And then I also love um, the cherub tomatoes. You can get those at Walmart. They probably carry them other places too, but very specifically that brand. They're just so good. Uh, onions, pickles from time to time. Although I haven't eaten a pickle in, I, I don't even know, like a long time but I love pickles. I just, <laughs> um, pickled okra, pickled onions, pickled asparagus, kimchi. Um, 
What other vegetables do I eat? I don't know if that you would consider this a vegetable. But I'd love to make homemade pico. So in my pico, there's tomatoes, onions, cilantro, and garlic. And I make that. I haven't made it in a while, but I... The, in the beginning of summer, I was making it every week, homemade in my food processor. And, oh, man, it's so good. Any other vegetables? Hmm. Uh, that's the main vegetables that I eat. When it comes to fruit, I, like I said, I'm not a sweet person. So fruits have never been something. There's a fly. I don't really miss fruit. My, my kids eat fruit, um, and they eat, they eat mostly meat, and they eat some fruit. And they do fine with that. But I don't eat fruit. I just don't miss it. I never was a fruity. A fruity. Is that a thing? Whatever. A person who loves fruit. It's just not. It was never one of my favorite foods. I don't really miss it. And I never eat it. I don't eat any grains. I don't any eat any form of grain. So no pasta. No rice. Unless I'm at my abuelita's house. I'm half Puerto Rican. For those of you who are new, and um, when I go visit my abuelita, she cooks Puerto Rican food, and <laughs> there is rice, and I usually fall into the rice. On, I just trip and fall into it. I don't know how it happens, and I eat plantains while I'm there, too. That's not grain, but, like, that's my... <laughs> if someone was in my house cooking Puerto Rican food 24-7, like, I could not sustain my diet. I couldn't, because it's good. It's very good. Getting back to the, the fruit thing, this leads me to the secret I want to tell you. <laughs> and the secret is, it does not flipping matter what I eat. Because what I eat may or may not work for you, and there's literally no way for me to know that, or you to know that, unless you commit to doing an elimination diet and figuring it out. Because that's how I got where I am. There are people that I am best friends with that cannot ever, ever eat a carnivore honey barbecue bar, all right? They would binge on this, even though it's super high fat and super high protein, but they couldn't eat this because it has sweetness in it. And even if it's seven grams of carbs, which is, could technically be keto if you're keeping your total carbs under 20 grams and you're doing keto, that would send them on a binge. Even though this is like Maybe one of the healthiest things out there that has sweetener in it, right? Because it's really good quality fat, really good quality beef, but it has sweetener in it. But they do have unflavored, just to be clear. But they couldn't touch that. Some of my friends cannot eat onions. I have a really dear friend, and onions literally make her violently ill. Violently ill. She cannot eat onions. I could eat onions every single day, and nothing would happen. Same with tomatoes, same with some types of meat. Some people cannot eat chicken, like they can't tolerate it. Some people are in, have an egg sensitivity and I eat eggs every single day. Like what I eat does not matter for you. The whole point of this series is to, to point that out to you guys that you guys need a personalized approach and doesn't matter how many videos I do on YouTube. It seems like people don't hear me when I say this. It, you have to put the work in to know what's going to work for you or what's not. How much fat you need. How much fat makes you thrive. And how much fat gives you the backdoor trots. You know, how much protein you need in the beginning may change in the end. This is a ever going N equals 1 experiment. If you don't know what that means, I'm going to break it down real quickly. It means an experiment where there is only one subject. Your subject is yourself. And you perform experiments on yourself, given the variables that are specific to you, your body, your diseases, your background, your health history, your goals. Like, there's so many things that go into it. I wish I had the answer. <laughs> I mean, I kind of do. Do an elimination diet. You know, but even that is a little more complicated than just doing an elimination diet if you don't know what you're doing. So the next video, I'm going to break down, like, the top 10 foods you should eliminate according to Nisha, all right? And I'm just me. I'm just a registered nurse slash health coach on YouTube. And like, maybe you don't give a crap what my opinion is, but someone asked for that. So I'm going to give it to you. The moral of the story is you got to put in the work and no one wants to hear that y'all. I'm not saying everybody, but so many people are like, just tell me what to do. Just tell me what to eat. Just give me the answer. Do it for me. And I can't. And I really wish I could. I really do. Um, 
but it's just a little bit more nuanced than than that. Anyways, <laughs> I hope you found this uh informative helpful uh maybe funny i appreciate you guys uh especially the new ones to my channel welcome i'm so happy to have you and uh i'll see you in the next one love you mean it